By the time this video comes out, Virtue Tech's regular decisions will have just been released. Now, I know a lot of other people are making videos talking about Georgia Tech as a whole, which I've admittedly done in a lot of other videos, but today's video is exclusively about Georgia Tech's computer science program. After spending the past four years of my life here and having three different internships at different companies, I have a pretty good idea of what worked well, what wasn't so great, and just what I didn't expect coming out of high school. Probably one of my biggest misconceptions coming out of high school was that I was going to be learning a ton of different languages in college. Now, at the time, I only had experience with Objective-C and C++, and I knew there was a lot more depth there to be explored, but I figured by the time I graduated, I'd have experience with a ton of different languages, and maybe I'd have 8 to 10 languages that I would have learned through college. The truth is, the majority of my classes at Georgia Tech have been in Python and Java, and not much else. I did get a little bit of experience with assembly and C from one class, and I was briefly in a club that was focused on learning Swift, but really, in my classes, I didn't learn anything about C++, C Sharp, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or really any other language you could think of. Interestingly, despite ever formally learning it, I used C++ for the majority of my interviewing, at least when I had the choice. I also did an internship entirely in C Sharp, and I also taught myself Swift on the side so I could develop iOS applications. And I think the broader theme that I'm trying to get at here is instead of focusing on the syntax and learning a whole bunch of languages in college, Georgia Tech's program is more so focused on teaching you the important concepts while also teaching you a little bit of Python and Java along the way. So even though you will learn the basics of Java and Python in the computer science program here, the truth is they realize that when you go on the job, you're probably going to have to pick up a new language or if you're working on a project and you need to learn a new skill, it's more important that you understand the concepts and the fundamentals behind languages and language acquisition as opposed to actually just knowing all the languages you'll ever need. In summary, just don't fall into the trap of thinking that you're going to become an expert in a bunch of different languages if you come to tech, unless, that is, you're willing to do a lot of self-studying on the side. As a lot of you probably know, Georgia Tech's computer science program is built on something called Threads, which essentially just lets you specialize in two specific areas of computer science. I've talked about this more in other videos. I chose devices and intelligence, which definitely had its pros and cons, but there was one overarching aspect of the threads program that I did not like. By committing to two specific threads, which I think you have to do by some point in your sophomore year, you're essentially closing yourself off from a lot of the different types of computer science classes that George Tech has to offer. The idea is that this lets you focus on the areas of computer science that you really care about so you can dive more deeply into them, and I do think the threads program lets you do that, but at the same time, there were a number of computer science classes that I was interested in taking while I was here that I never ended up getting to take simply because they didn't fit into my coursework. CS majors do have some electives, so it's possible I could have taken some of these classes, but the issue is, in classes that have a limited capacity, you're going to be second in line to anyone who actually needs to take that class for their thread. So if I don't actually need to take that class to graduate and someone else does, I'm probably not going to be able to get into it. Overall, I do have a positive impression of threads, and I think the program is well run, but just realize that you're going to lose a little bit of breadth and flexibility in your degree at the expense of going more in depth into the things that you really care about. This is by no means a dig at George Tech, but what I've discovered is that the assignments you work on here by no means can match the scale of what you'll work on in the real world once you actually get on the job. You'll learn the fundamentals and important concepts of working in small teams, but the truth is the scale of the assignments here is so much smaller than anything you'll be working on in the real world where there's a lot of challenges associated with understanding and contributing to huge systems. The largest SEAL project that I ever worked on as part of a class was something called Junior Design. Essentially, you work in a five-person team over the course of two semesters with a client who has an idea, and your job is to convert that from concept to reality. Depending on who you are, this likely sounds more exciting than it actually is. Now, I do think this was an important experience, and I do think I got a lot out of doing it, but it's also going to largely depend on the team you're working with and the client you get. Our team ended up making a relatively basic Android application for our client, which he seemed happy with, and we did get experience with Agile in the process, but I really do think we could have taken more away from that class. I should mention here though, that if you really wanna get experience in a large scale project, there are a number of computer science clubs on campus that could help you do just that. For example, I spent a semester with the RoboJackets and that was a great experience for getting to work with some real code that actually gets applied to a real project. So I would definitely recommend to anyone who thinks they're not getting quite enough out of their classes, go join a club like that and you'll get a lot of experience working with a larger code base. This is probably true for just about every university and every program that you'll see, but the truth is, coming out of high school, I really did not know what to expect out of my professors. I'll begin by saying that I've definitely had some brilliant professors here. Now, they might not have been the easiest classes and it could have been a lot of work, 
but I definitely got a lot out of the courses and there was never any doubt that the professor knew what they were talking about. On the other hand, I won't say that I've necessarily had any bad professors, but I will say I've had a number of professors who struggle to communicate effectively with students. So even if they have a lot of knowledge up in their head, if they can't find a way to convey that to students, then a lot of it gets wasted. You'll also find that there's a mix of classes that are run leniently versus rigidly, whether that be in terms of testing, deadlines, or just how much partial credit the professor is willing to give. Even for the exact same course, depending on your professor, you're going to get a very different experience. When I took my algorithms class, I think my professor did a good job of mixing conceptual knowledge with doing pseudocode and making things a little bit more concrete for us, but apparently according to other people, there was another professor teaching that exact same class who was very abstract, and as a result, it was very hard to follow what he was trying to talk about. Beyond the professor though, your TA will also make a pretty big difference in your experience. Especially in the early CS classes, you'll probably have weekly recitations, and if you're struggling with the material for whatever reason, the TA can really help you out and can help communicate things as a student, sometimes better than the professor can. Like I said, this point probably does stand for just about every university and every program, but before I came here, back when I was in high school, I did not expect there to be so much variance between professors and between classes. This point is a bit different than the other four because it doesn't focus on the curriculum and the coursework. It's really just about George Stick's College of Computing as a whole. Something I definitely did not take advantage of enough during my first year here was all the resources that are available to students who are looking for internships, co-ops, and jobs. At least in pre-COVID times, there would be a different company in the lobby of the COC pretty much every day for months at a time, and you can picture this as a mini career fair every day where you get to talk to one specific company, get your resume in their hands, and just get some experience talking to a recruiter. I didn't do this at all my freshman year for literally no good reason, but I did go to the career fairs that are specifically for the College of Computing. Beyond that, there's a ton of other resources available, whether that be interview prep sessions, resume reviews, workshops, or company office hours where you get to sit down with a recruiter talk to them for 15 minutes about your resume, and honestly I think that was a big part of landing me my second internship. There's a lot of other resources and things that I could talk about here, but long story short, if you're willing to take the initiative, George Tech's College of Computing gives you a ton of opportunities when it comes to landing an internship or a job. Alright, I know there's a lot of things that I could have touched on here that I left out, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave those down in the comments below, I'm generally pretty good about answering. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and send it to anyone else you know who's considering computer science at Georgia Tech. If you're new here, consider subscribing for new videos every week. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.